safely through to the semi-final stage. We started the tournament with four former champions, all four former champions in the quarter-final stage. Three of them are already through to the semi-final stage. Will they be joined by a Tai Su Ying, who is a two-time former champion? That would be extraordinary, wouldn't it? So our next match after that excellent women's singles is a men's doubles and it's home interest. It's an all European clash between Marcus Ellison and Chris Langridge, the Olympic bronze medalists and reigning Commonwealth and European Games champions up against the winners of the All England Championships from four years ago, Vladimir Ivanov and Ivan Sozanov of Russia. Well, as far as the men's doubles draw, is concerned top half of the draw has been decided five seeds by se uh, quarter final stage seven different nationalities very diverse uh, discipline and uh, the defending champions the sun and sethi one and the former champions gideon and sukamolio the two top seeds in this men's doubles draw so this is the third quarter we're about to witness now uh, between the English pair who undoubtedly will have huge support here. For Marcus Ellis, there he is, leading out all four players. He's already in the semi-finals tomorrow in the mixed doubles, coming through a thriller with his mixed doubles partner, Lauren Smith. Well, that's ominous for home fans because this is the fourth meeting between the two pairs. And of the previous three encounters, Ellis and Language have not managed to win one single match. Uh, but it has to be said that not only that last one that we saw in the European Mixed Team Championships of 2019, all three previous encounters have all happened in the European Mixed Team Championships. So this is the first meeting between these two pairs in individual competition. Well, it's been 35 years since a pair from England reached the semi-final of the All England men's doubles discipline. In 1985, Stephen Badley and Martin Dew lost in the semi-final stage. Can this pair of Ellis and Langridge end the 35-year wait for more semi-finalists? Have to go back 36 years a year prior to the last semi finalist and the last <laughs> pair that reached the final. That was Mike Treadwell and Martin Dew in 1984. Well, you can see that Vladimir Ivanov is a giant of a man. Chris to serve. English on the toss, chosen to serve. What an opportunity, what a tournament Marcus Ellis is having, the 30-year-old from Huddersfield. Only pair in the men's doubles draw to have won uh, a medal in Rio de Janeiro. Well, uh, they won that bronze medal in Rio. They've won gold medals since at the European Games and Commonwealth Games. Chris Langridge is 34 years of age from Epsom in Surrey. 23 in the world rankings at the moment, but they did spend seven weeks as world number 14s. And they, so far, have beaten in the first round the three-time finalists at the World Junior Championships, uh, Di Wang from China. And then a wonderful result yesterday against the Asian Games silver medalists, Alfian and Ardianto. That was two straight games, as you can see, and they really were absolutely superb. So here's the tall man, Vladimir Ivanov from Chelyabinsk in the Ural Mountains in Russia. 197. That's about six foot six, a little over have been as high as seven in the world ranking, went down three places on Tuesday in the latest world ranking, down to 31. And his left-handed partner, 30-year-old Ivan Sozinov, born in Svalosk. 
And when they won the All England title in 2016, they beat Endo and Hawakawa in the final. Well, they've beaten a Japanese pair uh, this year, having beaten Han Cheng Kai and Zhao Haodong in the first round, beat number four seeds in three games, Takeshi Komura and Keiko Sonoda. The World Championship silver medalist from two years ago needed three games there, 21-19 in the deciding game. So Kang Sung Young from Korea, our umpire for this one. And I can tell you that prior to these All England Championships, Ivanov and Sozanov had not won a match in individual competition this year. So this uh, a welcome return to form for the tall Russians and former All England champions, former European champions. Won the European Championships in Kazan in 2014. So the first two encounters between these two pairs in European Mixed Team Championships both went the full distance. But who would have thought at the start of the week that a pair ranked Ladies 23 in the world and 31 in the world would be vying for an All England semi-final place? Chris Langridge, England. Yeah, huge home support as one would expect for Ellis and Langridge. To Vladimir Ivanov. Low ball. Play. String's gone, I think, in Chris's racket. Yeah. yeah. Just runs forward. Hides off, he goes. Get another racket. <laughs> Grabbed another racket. <laughs> now back in play. Oh, he's broken another one. Oh. Ah. <laughs> he's won the competition for longest throw of racket with so broken sorry. string. Yeah. <laughs> Almost hit the camera, man. Off he goes. Look at that. <laughs> Throws the racket away. Back on. And then breaks another string. Yesterday. Well, he, do he doesn't see the funny side of it. No. <laughs> Yesterday, the <laughs> shuttle got stuck in his racket and he tried to get rid of it. Couldn't do it, though. Some players who are playing with a little bit thinner strings in their rackets than others. Uh, it can become costly because it's very rarely you win the rallies when you break a string in your racket. with his racket, even though that uh, I can kill it. And he certainly can, the tall man. Mm. Well, there's an intimidating look. So, Steen, I was searching the record books earlier today to find out the last English player, male or female, to be in two All England semi-finals in the same year. So that's my quiz wow. question of the day. 
And the last male player, but the last player is obviously a female player. You can have a little think about it. Yeah. Yeah, well played by the left-handed Sozanoff. So two semi-finals. In the same year. In the same year. Mm. I would have to go with Mike Tredgett again. As the last male player? Yes. No. No? no. Earlier or later? Later. Well, the control of the nets and dominating the front court area is going to be crucial in this match, yeah. I'm pretty certain. Oh, yes, well taken. Yeah, you can't afford to hit anything loose, even off a, half a step. And he can kill it. <laughs> Shall I put you out of your misery? Simon Archer. No. No, then you have to do it. Martin Jew. Martin Jew. 35 years ago. With Mike Tretchett. No. No. Stephen Badley. Oh. And Julian Jules in, in the mixed doubles. Yeah. And what about uh, the female player? Well, the last female player to do it was one of the most underestimated players in English badminton, I think, and I was privileged enough to play with her at the end of, end of my career. Yes, Julie Bradbury in uh, 1995, year after I was in two semi-finals. Julie Bradbury was in two semi-finals with Joe Good and Simon Archer. Yep. Expressive is the <laughs> Russian coach. <laughs> Goes down as a service error. Six, Moves well for a big man, doesn't he? Yeah. Vladimir Ivanov. Four. Forehand side. And then a smash around the head, straight down the middle in between the two English players. on the attack, I 
sense the English pair. Good rotational play by the English combination. when you see the Russian pair play like this, Steen. Why have they been struggling? Yeah, where have they been? <laughs> where have they been? Why have they been struggling in World Badminton? Yeah. 12 first-round losses last year. Three already this year. Last year, I should point out that they had better than first-round losses, but this year they've played three tournaments and three first-round losses. That's a great shot from Ivan Sozinov. Yeah, they, uh, they are looking exactly like um, when they won the All England title in um, 2016. Yeah, it was just before the Olympics, right? That's right. This goal high. called too high, so they'll serve as judge from France. Six, Chris, Chris, get ready. <laughs> While we saw the replay, the umpire told Chris Langridge to, to get ready, and uh, the gestures was like, yeah, please don't disturb me, I'm talking to my partner. <laughs> <laughs> He is notorious for taking his time. Yeah, isn't he? he is. Yes. Yes. Oh my goodness! He dropped his racket as well. Sos enough. language there in between the two English players They thought that was long of the back line. It was mighty close, I think. Yeah. I agree. I think it was really, really close. I think it might have been in. There we go. They were right. Yeah. Good challenge. Correction out. So to the mid-game interval with a four-point advantage. The former champions Ivanov and Sozanov. Скидывать на сетку, переходить передней задней вот так. И вот такие моменты плоские по прямой начинать. 
Они на плоских смещаются, да, как я уже сказал, на сетку пока не Talking about fading the defence, was that Steen? I heard fading. I, I'm not. I didn't hear what, what the defence was. Was that taking the pace out of it? Yeah, I suspect so. Yeah. And, uh, but Anthony Clark saying, "Take them on at the front of the court." Yeah. If if they can beat you on the net, then that's it. But um, 11, if they can't, 7. then um, then we have a chance. Play. I think they feel that they're better in the flat game. Uh, Chris and Marcus, but they're not really getting enough into that flat game because the Russians are, are keen to lift. Oh, Wait, that's, nice. that's deep. <laughs> Strings gone. Yeah. Could have hit the other killers of uh, Sosna there. Yes, of course, it was the European Championships of 2016 where yeah. Ivan Sosanov ruptured, ruptured his Achilles a month after winning the All England, but got back in time for the Olympic Games and they reached the quarter final of the Olympics in Rio. It's extraordinary. Three months, three and a half months after Achilles' operation. But they've never really that win up after his Achilles operation and um, I wonder if it takes four years to to heal it completely oh, oh. that's another service error yeah clearly short Well, Chris is going to be spoken to here by the umpire. Or even of. No, 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 no. As he looked up, as he looked up, he served. I'll put my hand ready. Yeah. This is going to be interesting to follow because I don't think Chris is going to change much of his um, routine unless he gets warned by the umpire. It's all mind games, isn't it? Because his opponents know that he likes to take his time when receiving, yes. and they're trying to rush him. They're they're getting ready to serve and serving before he's he's ready. So it's a bit of a psychological battle as well as a tactical battle. Good interception here. Yeah, that's what he was doing so well yesterday, wasn't yeah. it, Langridge? Really intercepting well at the net. And it's a good comeback, too. Just one point in it now, having been four points adrift at the mid game interval. Four of the last five points. I think the Russians are doing some good things uh, in the flat game. I don't know if it's on purpose or what, but they're playing the backhand side mostly of um, the English combination. Well, well, the back line. I don't think they're that um, dangerous in the flat game in the backhand side as they are in the forehand. They're both very good um, players when they play flat game with their forehand. Seen it very often with Indonesian pairs. They 
deliberately cross to the opponent's backhand side if they're playing two right-handed players. That's a third service error in this opening game from Marcus Ellis. The third? Third. Wow, that's significant. Yeah. Yeah, there's one short. in it. a super final smash, isn't it? Also playing mixed doubles now with um, Katarina Bolotov, the yeah. kind of wild card for the uh, European Championships. Bolotov and uh, Bolotov and uh, Ivanov. He's a good mixed doubles player. Very versatile player. Mm. Also plays a really nice men's singles, or at least he used to. I don't know if he's and you're not practicing it for a while, then the um, level drops. Well, he was bronze medalist in the men's singles at the 2014 European Championships. Yeah. Of Chris Language. I, I think that's one of the situations where he knew after both before he hit the shot and after what he should have done, he just didn't do it. As we discussed earlier, the reflexes are simply so um, instinctive. Don't let them get into this flat game or attacking game. Get it below the tape if you can. Yes, he's in. rally of the match so far. 16, Look at this. Wow. Just caught the line. We can't afford any more service areas, I think, Marcus Ellis. No. At least not in this first game. Oh, 
Yeah, that was the block defence there. Yeah. But he's very sharp and on the net is the left-handed Ivan Sozanov. Yeah, I think Ellis forgot he was a left-hander. interception from Langridge making the difference in the rally 17 18 that one yeah Uh, it was a great net shot. Yeah. Forced the error. Once again, the net play from Sozanov. Proving decisive. 19, it's a fantastic battle between mostly Chris Language and uh, Ivan Sosanov at the net, trying yeah. to get the uh, upper hand. So two-point advantage and two points away from the opening game the former champions. Disguise on that shot and what angle from Vladimir Ivanov. That was so steep and played with such deception. Yeah. Three game point opportunities for the Russian pair. Deflected the shuttle. That one. Yeah. Made it very difficult for Sozanov. First of the game points saved. Of course, Marcus Anna saving three match points along with Lauren Smith in the second game of their mixed doubles quarter final. <laughs> Opening game, though. So here in the men's doubles to the former champions, Vladimir Ivanov and Ivan Sozinov. 21-18, opening game in 26 minutes. 26 minutes, that's almost as long as the first men's doubles we watched, quarter-final with Gideon and Sokomolio. The whole match was yeah, 31. Yeah, the full match with Gideon and Sokomolio. <laughs> 31 minutes. <laughs> Uh, 
пятые леса, они расходятся в параллель, сразу можно разыгрывать сетку. Вот. После того, как Лейнгридж принимает, они выходят в передний заднюю. Здесь можно втыкать и выходить дальше. Средний serves, says Anthony Clark. Stand up on your defence, stand up in the court area, yeah. that is, not stand up straight, crowd <laughs> down low, but <laughs> you're standing back on the defensive shots and that's meaning you've got to lift the shuttle too much. You agree with all of that advice? Yes. Um, I'm a little... I, I, I think... I think it was brave of Pete Jeffrey to suggest variation in the serves, uh, especially given the, the trouble that we've seen Marcus Ellis yeah. had with his three uh, service errors, which basically uh, is the three points that were the difference in the first game. So now they are playing a little bit with the drift and their shot should arrive at the Russian side a little bit faster. So I actually think um, they're in pretty good shape right now. Uh, Ellison language. The only uh, concern I have is how about Marcus Ellis? How much psychic energy has he got left? Because uh, it was a thriller that he was through uh, earlier today in the mixed doubles, and it takes its toll on a player no matter what. Uh, they played good matches throughout this tournament, but it's his sixth match since uh, Wednesday that he's playing now. Yeah, so I hope he's got enough psychic energy. So. Um, and psychological energy so um, so we can get a great um, second game and perhaps a designer. Yeah, I hope he's got enough physical en energy because that quarterfinal this morning, the mixed doubles, was an hour and 24 minutes. Yeah, but it's not going to be that physical. I mean, Chris Language is going to take the breaks that, uh, that Elias is going to need. I also hurt. Anthony Clark say here, when you get it below the tape, you're killing them. Good play. Yeah. That's what they were advised. Exactly the variation that, that way. Three. That's why I, I thought it was brave, but it was also risky by Pete Jeffrey to to try and interfere with the services because they hadn't been rock solid. But mm. maybe he didn't notice it. I didn't notice it only because you kept track of it, Jill. Yeah. That was definitely three in the first game. Yeah. a backbreaker that last shot from Langridge and he already wears a back support uh, just inside the line longest rally of this second game so far longer rally in the opening game that was 34 shots Hey, focus. 
Short and lift. Mm. Yeah. That was a big chance. Yeah. It's basically Three, what they want four. to do, that is in language, get the uh, opposition a little bit uh, off balance because then it's difficult to get the correct length. On the other hand, if you're in balance, you can get the correct length on your lift and um, play a really, really solid defense um, here in uh, Arena Birmingham. And dumping it. Oh, my goodness, indecision. How did they get away with that? No, ended up winning the rally. Yeah, you know, Chris Langridge is urging the fans to really get behind them, show their support, be verbal in their sh support. Yeah, says, come on, cheer for us. points yeah that is in language and uh, that's crucial a couple of easy points with the flick it was good advice yeah. from coach clark Even Ivan Sosunov that are standing back in their defense. are responding to the request from Langridge. But the English player giving them more to cheer about. Yeah, that was really well played by uh, Marcus Ellis because normally it's Chris Langridge who wants to come forward and that means that the opponents probably think, OK, we can always block it to Marcus, but then he, he stayed at the net and uh, scored a point. Easy point, extremely valuable. his ground, blocks and moves forward. We saw him do a lot of that yesterday, didn't we, Steve? Thank you. Yeah. Back and forth. Back and forth. Oh, the taking their time. Yeah. Ivan Sozanov still struggling Vladimir. a little bit with Vladimir. change of direction, pushing off after his ruptured Achilles. And it's a handsome lead now for the English combination. Five point advantage.
Oh, it's just long. Oh. I didn't like his movement there, Steve. No, I think he hurt his left foot a little bit. Five, ten. to the mid-game interval. She's faulted both of the Russian players for striking the shuttle too high. But a six-point advantage at mid-game interval to the English pair. Probably right to go for it. Right. Can't make every interception. Oh. Uh, they need to. That was a little bit too uh, yeah. quick. Um, that even when Sultan have scored three points, if you're an English fan. Now it's still interesting. Wipe the quick crease. I think the uh, game interval actually came at the wrong time as far as the English players yeah. were concerned. They yeah. were had a bit of momentum going, didn't they? Yeah, and what, what could what could Anthony Clark tell them? What could they uh, uh, tell them that they weren't doing well already it was a chance for the russians to sort of um, regroup yeah the frame of the racket and there's some big gulps of air being taken in by Vladimir Ivanov. Yeah. And think of how easily he scored in the first game. I, I would say there's definitely some kind of drift in this arena. There's no doubt about it. Alongside the court coming from Mark Zellers in Chris Language towards Ivanov and uh, Sosanov. Play. Chris, get ready. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh. 
So after the court was wiped, two points for the English. It's broken. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, racket head was actually smashed and he Such looked at it, decided he had to run off course. Yeah, that's Nine. not gonna see another shuttle, is it? Initially hold on. Realised that with his lift. The racket must be broken, the racket head actually smashed. <laughs> oh, well played. That's a lovely shot from Ivanov. Such so ball. Taking it so low and playing a perfect block to the net. below the tape on the uh, Russian side. Really working well for Alison Langridge. <laughs> Lots of mistakes from the two Russians. Gets the net cord to get it anywhere near the back of the court, and that was nowhere near the back of the court. No. When, did you see the look that Vladimir gave <laughs> his partner after, used that, to that. <laughs> <laughs> after that service error? So much for the sort of, don't worry, partner, come on, next point. <laughs> Got the look. and language are faster on uh, the shuttles right now. They're taking it early. The Russians reacting to uh, most of what's happening. Beautiful drop shots uh, in the attack like uh, Pete Jeffrey and Anthony Clark was discussing in between the first two games here that uh, the variation in the attack is doing damage to the Russians. Yeah. 
who was quick on to that was Marcus Ellis. 18, 11. And now I think the sort of uh, realizing that this is going to go into decider, so they're not going to use too much energy, I think. On the reminder of this um, second game. in the legs of the Russians at the yeah. moment to change direction. Two points away from taking the second game. the advantage right now if we consider how easily they've won this second game or soon won this second game what an extraordinary brilliant shot from Marcus Ellis look at that brushed over the <laughs> shuttle game point opportunities a whole host of them One game all, 21-11, the second game in favour of Marcus Ellis and Chris Langridge. Everything to play for in the third and deciding game. Service definitely crucial. Stop drops, both of you, because they're so deep. Even if they don't have to be tight. Yeah, no, it's a moving shot. Like, if some like they need to be winners, yeah. they just don't need, like, just as long as they move and then they're hard, they're going to yeah, get yeah. it. Yeah, that's exactly right. Okay. Straight. The slices, the half slices, both of those singles are as much as just to keep them so they can't just stand there and hack it. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. And then when they're pushing down the lines like we have to do, pressing afterwards, it's good to get a lift. Oh, you're getting through them on the time. Maybe not taking them on the time. Might take one, but you're still getting through them all the time. It's good when you push them on the You're getting used to push them on the time. Yeah, exactly. Come on. We defend it. Make a move. The hold lifts are the good ones. Has he got the uh, Chris Language there? <laughs> it looks like a mess, that kit box. <laughs> you can't find anything. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah, well, the umpire's not having any of this untidiness. What now? Seems like he hurt his hand or something. Yeah. <laughs> Ready, play on. Final game. Lock wall. Play. Really crucial start to this uh, third game for both pairs because Ivanov and Sosnov, they're going to come out trying to stamp their mark on this um, third game here. One love. Come on, England, let's go! Hey. 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 Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yes. 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 
back Marcus Ellis was right there. One of the occasions, perhaps, that Langridge should have left it to his partner. But I think the fact that he's willing to try and intercept so often has paid dividends for them, not only yesterday's match, but also in this match. Yeah, he, he has to be active. Yeah. Some possibilities if uh, the Russians could play one fast pace, the um, defense cross, then they, they will open up a lot of um, opportunities straight afterwards. But it's not so easy to to do. It takes a lot of um, touch and skill. Danger for for um, Edison language is that the Russians are building um, a cushion here in the third game. They really have to be disciplined. Don't push that one. Don't push it. Uh, and it looks to me as if Ellis doesn't have the same spark that we saw in yesterday's match against Alfian and Adianto. And it, very much after today's quarterfinal of the mixed doubles where he was just firing on all cylinders. Yeah. Good shot again. It's going wide. Oh, that's a great shot. Yeah, well played, Sozanov. Yeah, Victor Milutin is urging the players just to go on, go on. He knows that they probably need a cushion. Interception eventually by this man, Chris Language. Fantastic play. in language have had only a few chances but Play. they haven't flicked in this third game and that was sort of something that got them started in yes. the second yeah Oh, 
Tsitsipas really is looking very promising for the Russian pair. It's going to take an effort. It's going to take a, a psychological effort also to come back if, yep. when you're trailing. And that, that's what I'm a little bit worried. Um, and of course, they got the support of the uh, home audience here. But this is way, way too quickly. Um, even of Sosanova scoring points and all credits to them for coming out firing after being down and out in the second game. Yes, I agree. body language that I think most English fans will be bothered about at the moment with the two English players. Yeah, and I also think they got a little bit um, too comfortable with the big win in the second game. They were not disciplined enough. Now they need to score some points now before the change of ends, then it's still doable, but, but they have to be very disciplined on this side of the court and get it below the tape, be more patient in their attack because it's not so easy to kill it from this near side of the court. Yeah. And I think they've underestimated that. There was the flick. A seven point advantage, even off and sozen off at the change of ends here in the deciding game, and that is a very tall order for Ellison Langridge to come back from that sort of deficit. Back support ever present with Chris Langridge. Chris, Chris, you should be on court. No, he's pushing it now. And this is a warning. This is clearly a warning. And yeah. it shouldn't be us who has to point this out. Yeah. He's not ready when the 60 seconds are gone. Yeah. Some language and uh, they need it quickly. And some body language and belief. Yeah. And if they don't get that run of points, it's it's going to be difficult to um, to get the belief back. Try 
of defence moves forward. Yeah, and, and, and it's it's all the difference in the world whether you take it 10 centimetres early or 10 centimetres late. Yeah. Get ready, keeper. Oh, I know he's got his hand up, but I think what the umpire is trying to say is you shouldn't have your hand up. You, yeah. you should be ready. <laughs> hand up indicates that the player isn't ready. Oh, this is a very, very good situation if you're a Russian fan. And yeah. Fairly desperate situation if you're an English fan. Yeah, well left. The challenge? Oh, yeah. challenge here. I would never challenge that one. Oh. Why on earth are you challenging? You're ten points well, ahead, me. everything is going your way. Call. Yeah. Out. Why would you disturb the momentum? No. Here it we go. It was way up. Yeah. Challenge unsuccessful. One challenge remaining. Service over. Five. Fourteen. So, what could start a comeback is a, a big court. miss by um, Sosanov and and the look by Ivanov. Yeah. Flicker, perhaps. What, down the centre or out wide? Yeah, down the centre. No, out wide. Oh! That's a great flick serve. That was even better. Ability about that yeah, but and the outcome of that rally. 15, six. Super play, clever play by um, Sosanov. The patience in the attack that, um, that we asked for in, in the first part of this third game by Ellison Language. It takes more hits to uh, convert the attack to a point when you're standing on this near side of the court. Landed in. He could have played that. So, so Vladimir Ivanov. He's back on the superb. It looked like he was going wide all the way. Yeah, there's the sideways drift yeah. that you were talking about earlier. Oh, left to right, brought that one back in. Anticipated well, I yeah. thought earlier in the rally he was a little bit static at the front of the court. Ellis, he's he's not a, a natural front court player. Right? I think he's developed. He's not a strong front court player, but he's he's uh, definitely got, uh, got still, better. Yeah, and, and uh, oh. oh, that goes down as a fist. Service error. Sixteen. Yeah. 
to that match. That match before it's perfect. Oh, look at that angle from Ivanov. Using all of his eight. six foot six and a half. That's the outstretched racket arm. Murphy and good now. The yeah. two Russians. There's nothing like that feeling when you you tasted success. You won the tournament and then you've been struggling for a long, long, long time. And during that time, you question yourself whether you ever get to play at the same level again. Yeah. And that is what they're feeling now. Hey, we're back. Yeah. Three points away from winning this third game. The Russians. Two points away. Well, it's been a disappointment for English fans, this deciding game by yeah. Ellison Langridge. Big question, I suppose, in a lot of people's minds will be whether Marcus Ellis can physically and mentally get himself up again for the semi final tomorrow. That's a great flick serve. Lovely way to bring up match point opportunities. Pair have had a great tournament. It looks as if they're bowing out. Ah! And they, they do bow out. And for Vladimir Ivanov and Ivan Shozanov, a second to all England <laughs> semi final. Four years after winning the title, obvious disappointment. For Marcus Ellis and Chris Langridge, who beat the number five seeds Alfian and the Ardianto yesterday. But in the deciding game, they just couldn't find the physical and perhaps more importantly mental reserves to battle through. But a fine win for Ivanov and Sozanov 21 18, 11 21, 21 8 in the deciding game, a match lasting an hour and 11 minutes. The moment of victory. Well, the former European champions, former All England champions, after a torrid start to the year, losing first round of all previous individual tournaments on the World Tour. But safely through to the semi-final once more.